Second base, Alexander Olivo at first. That's fouled off to the left and out of play for Pat Hallmark's Roadrunners. Hill, Lytle, and Ty Odom, Caleb Hill. Matt Lytle and Ty Odom left to right in the outfield. Brock Palmer behind the plate, and that one's bounced up the first base side. Foul. One ball and two strikes on Carter Cunningham. Cunningham slugging at over 800. On base percentage over 500, an OPS of better than 1.3. That is just ridiculous numbers. One, two. Slider spins just inside, takes the count to two and two. Cunningham was a 2024 preseason all AAC team pick, and mm -hmm. he's certainly living up to it. He began his college career in 2020 at Garner Webb. That's bounced right back to the round. Big high hop. Underhand toss got him, so two quick ground outs. One of the keys for Orlowski in this game will be keeping the ball on the ground. Don't want a lot of stuff hit up in the air, but if you're going to hit it up in the air, you're going to have it blown back toward the infield, which is another advantage for this, this freshman right-hander. Yeah, having the wind in the batter's face, certainly going to keep balls in the park. I imagine you'd have to really hit it hard to exit Roadrunner Field today. Deep left-handed crouch for Cowart. Fouls that off to the left. Jacob Jenkins Cowart, 373 batting average. Six feet, six inches tall. 215 pounds, a 1.071 OPS. That breaks inside. Coward, Baseball America's 2024 preseason player of the year in the American Athletic Conference. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Big over the top curve for a strike. Well, he gets such great spin. On that curveball, outfield shifted slightly toward left for the left-handed batter. A ball and two strikes. That's poured over the middle. Strike three called. Got it. Up and down in order. The freshman Orlowski retired. Ty Odom, Diego Diaz, and Hector Rodriguez. Big rip and a miss at a letter high fastball. Strike one. Caleb Hills having a whale of a season. 5 batting average. Leads the team with bombs. We'll set that Pirates defense in just a moment. That's a high hit to first fair and stepping on the bag very quickly there Carter Cunningham one out now for Mason Lytle 359 batter defensively Dixon Williams at third Joey Barino plays at short for the Pirates Jacob starting at second the aforementioned Carter Cunningham at first Bristol Carter Riley Johnson Jacob Coward Jenkins or Jenkins Coward is that's foul back oh shot it right in First base dugout. Pirates scrambling around. Justin Wilcoxon behind the plate. Trey Yesavage on the mound. A 4 0 mark and a minuscule 1.2 ERA. Here's the pitch. Upstairs. Evens it at 1 1. Lytle 359. Four bombs, 18 driven in. Next pitch. Chop right back middle into center field base hit. Mason Lytle comes through with the first knock in the game. Didn't try to do too much with it. Drove it right back up the middle. Yeah, this is one of those situations where I think Coach Hallmark told his batters, come up swinging. This guy puts his pant legs on one leg at a time just like everybody else. And even though it was going to be tougher to hit, you saw Caleb Hill give it a good effort and Lytle reaches this time. And the other thing about it, when you talk about a strikeouts to walks ratio, a five to one, that means he's close to the plate on every pitch. And so why not swing away? Alexander Olivo, the left-handed swinging first baseman, looks at one upstairs, ball one. Olivo, 50, couple of homers. Olivo, two for five, and then lost to Texas State on Tuesday. Yeah, Savage throws it, it's foul back, and evens the count at one and one. Olivo with base hits in four of his last five. Hit it 372 for Texas Southern last year. Transferring over to UTSA. One ball.
ball and one strike. Double play depth infield. They play him to pull on that infield. One set. And the pitch. Breaking ball over the inside edge. Nasty downward inward tilt to that pitch. Olivo. Ten runs batted in. One, two. Banged into left center field. That'll drop. Over to cut it off. Comes the left fielder. Bristol Carter, so back-to-back -back singles have something going for the Roadrunners here in the first inning. And that'll bring up Matt King, the shortstop. Don't have to do too much with it, and I think that's probably part of Pat Hallmark's message to his hitters. And this is a UTSA team that can score. They put up 13 runs against Texas State earlier in the week, and it seems like, for the most part, back-to-back -back hits. The bats are still awake for the road runners. Trying to take advantage of it with King here. King, right-handed batter, looks at one downstairs. One ball and no strikes. Even 300 with three bombs. King's had one four-hit game on the season. That was against Tarleton earlier this month. 1-0 pitch. Drop that down and in. Two balls and no strikes. Radar guns galore in the stands here. We counted 16 scouts that we know. The set at 2-0. And the pitch. Bouncing ball into left field base hit. They're going to test the arm of the left fielder. Here comes the throw. It's not in time. One to nothing UTSA. Three straight base hits against the right-hander, you savage. Nicely done there. Mason Lytle comes around to score after being the first one to reach in the ball game, and he gives Orlowski a little bit of run support, and you Savage uh, probably not used to uh, bats quite like the Roadrunners so far. As So far as a team, they've made him sweat a little bit. Even Caleb Hill made some solid contact down that first baseline. That'll bring up the left-handed swinging catcher, Brock Parmer. You Savage with a runner at second, one at first, a rip and a miss on a breaking ball, strike one. Wind really howling, blowing in from center field. The last time we saw a howling center field blowing this way wind was a night where it was about 40 degrees and it froze us all up here. That pitch misses <laughs> inside. One ball and one strike. It's a much nicer spring day today. Oh, gorgeous. We're still keeping the windows closed so our papers don't fly out all around. That's one excuse. One ball and one strike, the pitch. That's... Bounce right out and foul. Parmer knew it was <laughs> Parmer knew it was foul right away. Our, Wait a uh, minute, it wasn't fouled off. It bounced. Oh. It'll be a he it was a swinging strike and a double steal. Oh wow. For Olivo and King. That's amazing heads up base running. Yes, Savage sets, deals in the dirt. Two balls, two strikes. That was really tough for us to see up here, but obviously not for Olivo, who was leading the way there for King to advance as well, both in scoring position well, now. He was oh, right at second base, had a dandy look at it. Two balls and two strikes. One to nothing UTSA, bottom half of the first in San Antonio, the set. A savage pitch. Just grabbed that outside edge, but, but missed low with it. Three balls, two strikes. Gorgeous day, though. Robin's egg, blue skies all the way around. It's been a beautiful, beautiful day here in South Texas. Robin's eggs are blue. I won't go. Robin's <laughs> egg, blue. Payoff. Inside, ball four, lost him to load him up. You've never heard of Robin's egg, blue skies? I don't think I have. Well, you weren't listening at two or three times this year when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> and out comes the pitching Austin Knight. And that's understandable. You Savage is not used to these situations where he's already allowed one run. Now the base are loaded off of a walk. Only one out on the board. And, you know, UTSA, we've talked about it all the time. They have a really tough line up top to bottom. James Tausick hits 302 is going to come to the plate. And uh, I can only imagine that strategy must be implemented here as they burn one of the two mound visits here in the first inning. 
Tausig at 6 6 stands in. He's a 3 0 2 batter with three home runs. Has him loaded here. Just need base hits. Just keep this assembly line moving, as the old saying the old saying goes. As you savage sets again and deals. That's upstairs and inside. Very tight letter high ball one. Tausig has base hits in seven of his last nine. The Savage sets again, shoulder level and deals. Down and away, two balls, no strikes. Interesting safety squeeze play seemed to be on there as Olivo was halfway down the line before he retreated back. I think it's safe to say that Pat Hallmark, the Roadrunners coach, will pull out all the stops tonight. 2-0 pitch. Ah, it's over just above the knees. Count to two and one. Of course, the difference between a safety squeeze and a suicide squeeze is the safety squeeze waits for the bunt to be laid down. The suicide squeeze is where you go whether or not the bunt's laid down, and that's why Olivo returned back because the bunt was not laid down, so it was a safety squeeze. The set to two one. High pop up. Out into the outfield, the second baseman. Starling back pedals, looks up into the sunshine and brings it in, tossing quickly back home. Ball got away, but backed up nicely by yeah, Savage. And uh, Housing flies out. That'll bring up Ty Odom, the right fielder. Right fielder number four, Ty Odom. Yeah, not quite deep enough for the tag up there. And Olivo even thought about the tag. and. Then obviously thought better of it as he wasn't going to test the arm basically in the infield. The Savage sets, bases remain loaded. The pitch, rifle to the outside edge, strike one. Talk about another 300 batter in this Roadrunner lineup. Odom hitting 317, the sophomore. Big spot right here to try and help extend this Roadrunner lead. No balls in one strike, the pitch. Way up and outside. Evens it up at one and one, 317 exactly. Two homers, six driven in. Odom with a brief three game streak working. 1-1 one, one from you, Savage is on the way. Rip and a miss, letter high heat. And two. And that's, that's a pitch they're going to have to lay off of tonight. That's you, you took the words right out of my mouth. That's a hard pitch to lay off of because it, it looks like the best pitch to swing at, but it's actually just a little too high for that bat to get a natural motion. One, two. Rip and a miss, strike three. So you Savage gets out of what could have been a showing alongside. A one to nothing lead for UTSA. First pitch in on the hand, swung on and missed by Jacob Starling, the second baseman, a 274 batter. Roadrunners, a run on three hits and left them str all stranded in the first inning. That pitch misses one and one. Starling, couple of homers, 12 driven in, breaking pitch misses down and away. I'll tell you what, as long as these Savage is on the mound, those three left on are gonna be a big deal. That's fouled off to the right. I was not going to mention the light purple uniforms. Sort of a pink purple? Yeah, and but I like them. I, I like them too. They're, they're smooth. Big fan of UTSA. That's a very simple, very baseball look. That's over for a strike. Strike three called. Two strikeout lookings in a row now for Orlowski, the freshman. It's almost as if Robert Orlowski has said, you know, the stud of this night is supposed to be a savage. Let me show him what I can do. He knows the scouts are in the stands. I bet he does. Justin Wilcoxon, the catcher misses. It lets that one go by, ball one. Wilcoxon, senior from Raleigh, North Carolina. Preseason All-American Athletic Conference. Very talented catcher. One and nothing. That's bang foul off to the left and out of play. We had a chance to visit with Coach Cliff Godwin on a Zoom call the other day. And he had nothing but the highest of praise for Wilcoxon. 
Here's the 1 1 delivery. That's a pop up down the third base side, and it's into the stands. Rodriguez realized about three quarters of the way up there he was going to have to slide if he was not going to hit that pad, and he did just exactly that. I really enjoyed our conversation with Godwin. Yeah, you, you know, he, he kind of had a cop out when we asked him about his thoughts on the road runners and such. One, two pitch. Bounce right down toward short. Easy scoop, easy throw. Got him. Five in a row retired now by Orlowski. Wilcox and grounds out. That'll bring up Bristol Carter, the left fielder, a 326 batter. Yeah, you know, what I was saying was Coach Godwin, he had a, a bit of a cop out by saying he doesn't really worry too much about his opponents. He just worries about what his team's doing, which is easy to say when your team is as good as his team is. Well, there is that. Squaring to bunt and pushes it down the third base side. This is a dandy. Carter beat. Oh, he called him out. And they're going to want to to look at that. Seems like our field umpires disagree with our first base umpire. Did, did they ever and vehemently? En enough so that I think that this is going to be one of those rare overturns in a 3-1 vote. Yeah, they're going to they're going to they're going to check this Husky. And that'll bring up Ryan McChrystal, the DH, hitting at 333. Crystal, a catcher by trade. One to nothing, UTSA. We're playing in the second inning here in a very windy San Antonio. Crystal, one home run, six driven in. Orlowski sets and brings it. That's banged in the left field, a base hit. See, everybody swings it. And that'll bring up Joey Barini, a 186 batter. Yeah, despite being a switch hitter, Barini is actually the lowest batting average of the lineup here in the eighth spot. So, you know, a big opportunity for him, but also probably the best chance for Orlowski to get out of the inning here unscathed. This is not a typical Joey Barini season, however. Here's the pitch. That's in the dirt, smothered nicely by Parmer, ball one. This last year. Barini was All-American Athletic Conference second teamer. Hit 318 with four home runs. Here's the pitch. That's fouled off to the left and out of play and evens the count at one and one. One ball and one strike. That's a nice looking pitch. Wow. Two and one. You hear the ever emphatic come on blue as some Roadrunner fans disagree and think the count should be switched. The set it. Two one the pitch. High chopper hit to first. Easy start this season in the starting lineup, but he has earned his way to a second base position start. Next pitch, square to bunt again and fouled it off again. And Pat Hallmark has been aggressive with those bunts, even on a two strike count. He's sometimes still allowed that sign to continue for bunts. So let's see if it stays on here for leadoff Diaz. Trey, you savage. Turns and deals 0-2, wave that had missed. Strike three. So that's the second straight strikeout, second overall for you, Savage. And it brings on Hector Rodriguez, the third baseman, a 216 batter. Rodriguez swings through a fastball and misses strike one. I had a chance to visit with him in the dugout the other night after the game. A one pitch. Fouled it off to the left, swinging way behind that fastball. Two strikes the count. 
I asked him how he was doing, and he said, I love this so much, I wish I could play six games every day. <laughs> I'm not sure Pat Hallmark would go along with all that, but that's the way it goes. Bounce to foul third base side. But I'll tell you this, he is a positive individual. He is really, really a happy dude when he's in that starting lineup. No balls and two strikes. Outside target to pitch. Aimed it a little too far outside, one and two. Waste pitch to see if Rodriguez would go after that, who only has two strikeouts on the season. One of the toughest batters to strike out. In the all in the American Conference. That's a pop up out towards short. Easy pickings for Joey Barini, who hauls it in. Two out now back to the top for Caleb Hill, who grounded the first unassisted to open the first inning. Precept left fielder number 15, Caleb Hill. Interesting to note that Caleb Hill's using the same bat as Rodriguez there, so obviously that must be a favorite among the pre-approved bats that they go through at the beginning of the game. The pitch, swing and a miss, strike one. Hill wears the uniform the way you're supposed to. His dad, a former professional player, four different major league organizations, he'll one pitch. High drive to right, racing over, wind has it over, over comes the right fielder, Jenkins Coward, and he can't make a grab, it's up on the berm down there. That just showed you how powerful that wind was. That might have still drifted foul, but if it weren't for the wind, it would have probably been out of the ballpark for sure. So uh, obviously Hill, second time seeing you Savage here at the plate, timed that pitch well. And you know, the Savage probably taking note of how much power was behind that swing. When you hit it that solidly into a wind like that, you have absolutely crunched it. Here's the 0-2. Up in the eyes, one ball and two strikes. There's one of those letter high fastballs we were talking about the Roadrunners need to lay off of, and that time Hill didn't even flinch. One and two. It's Savage kicks in, brings it. Wave at that breaking ball and miss. Strike three. So 19, now 20 games into the season. That's line past the diving third baseman, Rodriguez, and into left field a base hit. Rodriguez was playing with his feet on the infield grass, and had he been a bit more level with the bag, he probably would have gotten that. But based off that first single given up by Orlowski, which was a bunt, I imagine the hot corner's playing a little bit closer to try and see if they were going to replicate that. He's up in front of the cut at, at the cut at third now, the set. Orlowski a long hole, deals. Breaking ball, pretty good looking pitch, called a ball, one ball and no strikes. You see that third base playing in front of that cut. He has decided that they'll bunt at any time. And I'll guarantee you a throw to first not in time. Pat Hallmark, the coach for UTSA, has him there on purpose. Middle infield looks to turn to the 1 0 set and squaring the bunt again. And up the towards second base, and all the are safe. So this is the way you play that game. And wisely, Riley Johnson, the batter there, saw the hole in the infield. You could see he had turned to drag Bunnett toward first, held back a little bit, and then Bunnett it harder out towards second. At that point, Orlowski has to be the one who feels that. Nobody else can get to it. and. Uh, yeah, Pat Hallmark wants to talk to Orlowski about that because we talked to Pat Hallmark and conversely to what Coach Godwin said earlier in the week about how they focus on their self. Pat Hallmark gave us League and Major League Baseball, and it's a tool, and it's a tool that puts additional pressure on an infield defense, a pitcher, and a catcher. Left-handed stick Cunningham, here's the pitch. Way to miss, dandy, straight change, the bottom fell completely out of. As Cunningham waved through it and missed strike one. You're going to have to reach into your bag of pitches against Carter Cunningham. Not only does he have a great baseball name, he has a great statistical line as well, hitting 449 coming to the plate. 
next pitch sails over the inside edge strike two and poison right behind him and Jacob Jenkins coward waiting on deck for the top of their order. Well the whole order is really salty. No balls in two strikes to set the pitch upstairs one and two. You don't get to number 10 in the country on accident. This oh, is no. a very good ball team, and we're going to be probably singing accolades about all of their pitching staff all weekend long. Oh, I think so. Well, we're going to tell you a little bit about tomorrow's starter. One, two pitch. Chopper head out towards short. Can you turn two? Got to hurry. Not going to be able to get, get that last runner. Cunningham beats it out on the fielder's choice. 6-4 on the force of Johnson. Down to third goes Williams. And up steps Jenkins Coward, who struck out looking. One out now. This is where you really would love to see Jenkins Coward pound his way into a double play here. You're a Roadrunner fan, but obviously sack flies in play as well, so sure he's probably going to keep this in the air to try and tie it up. Oh, he's a square to bunt. They're going to throw through, and they got it. What a mistake at first base by Carter Cunningham. He was going thinking his teammate would get that ball down on the ground. It did not happen. He got gunned down. We talked about how we expect a lot of bunts from this Pirates team. And that time you expected Jenkins Coward to do it. He doesn't. And Palmer with a gun. That's a high pop up off to the left. Racing over goes Rodriguez into foul ground. It'll land in the trees just beyond the UTSA dugout. One ball and one strike. Brock Palmer, just fantastic find at catcher position this year for UTSA. Is he not? Not an easy play either. People think you should be able to make that throw. It's really hard sometimes to right. be able to do that. You're throwing into a win, too, by the way. 1-1. One, one. In too tight. Jack knifed him. Two balls and one strike. That also takes away that sack I was mentioning with two outs on the board now. Outfield slightly toward left. The nothing UTSA lead. Here's the pitch. Left that up a little off. Didn't get the downward tilt on his changeup he wanted, and it sailed away. Three balls and one strike. The pitch. All four lost it. Came back with the same pitch and had the same control problem with it. Slipped out of his fingertips. That's the first free pass issued by Orlowski. And it brings up Jacob Starling, who struck out looking to begin the second inning. We are in the third. Jacob Starling. A run on three hits, UTSA. No runs, four hits. East Carolina. Orlowski sets. Long hold. Deals. Swing and a miss. That was what he was trying to do with those previous two pitches. And finally got it where he wanted it. And Starling couldn't hang with it. One strike to count. Yeah, dialed it in there by Orlowski. And he's obviously not out of the sending yet, but he's starting to find his rhythm again. A one pitch, fouled it off. Now, I would suggest do not waste a pitch here. Just go and get him. Let's see if he'll waste one. Seems to be the strategy, but I agree with you because the last two waste pitches have been pretty well scouted by yes. Pirates. 0-2 set. Runners at the corners. Pitch on the way. Popped it foul behind home plate. Count remains at nothing and two. Well, he didn't waste the pitch. Boy, Orlowski has really come out and done very, very well. Appears to make no difference to him if these guys are ranked 10th in the country. The pitch. Loft in the air, out to center field. And over to pick it off, Mason Lytle. And that results in first pitch. This is down. Did he go? No, sir, says the first base umpire. That's Blake Felix. One and nothing to Mason. Mason singled and scored the only run back in the first. 
Savage throws it. It's laced into left field, past the diving shortstop. Joey Barini. And a two-hit day so far for Mason Lytle. That's the fourth hit surrendered by Trey Savage, and it brings up Alexander Olivo, who single and stolen base back in that first inning. Well, you talk about Mason was on that from the time it came out of your Savage hands, or hand. And he certainly is not scared of one of the nation's best pitchers. The pitch, swing and a miss. Look like his split. Bottom completely fell out of strike one. Olivo now with base hits in five of six, a throw to first, not in time. Chokes up slightly on that metal bat. No balls in one strike. Your savage deal squares the bunt, lets it go by. Evens it up at one and one. Good eye there. I understand the thought process there by Olivo. See if he can maybe get Lytle in position. And with how far Williams is playing behind third base bag, there's a lot of space there on the infield for him to lay down. That was going to be my sentence right behind your first, and you just went right ahead and did it. I appreciate that. One ball and one strike. The pitch. Laid it down and away, two and one. This has been so far a cat and mouse game. And I like baseball games where somebody has already let it be known that they're going to be bunting. You better be ready. Here's the two one. That's bang foul off to the left and out into the parking lot. Teams have shown bunt plenty of times. And yeah, like you said, as, as a Phillies fan, it always drove me crazy why Ryan Howard didn't just bunt where the shift left him to, you know, basically walk to first with how much space was on that left side of the field. But uh, it, it's a great skill to have. Two balls and two strikes. Pitch misses low. Well, Ryan Howard, you had to time him on a sundial to first base. He was that slow. <laughs> his money swinging from his shoes and hitting it four miles 3-2 pitch laced foul third base side count remains full boy Mason Lytle came away from that first base bag in a shot Same sport, different game, but obviously at the major league level they covet those home runs and oh sure yeah that, that's a big deal Scampering back to first goes Lytle. And of course, we love the long ball here in the NCAA as well, but you're just not really going to have too many guys that are racking up home runs like you do in professional baseball. 3-2 set. Another throw to first. Well, as our buddy Keith Moreland, who does color on the Texas Longhorns television, says there's a lot of different ways to win. And if you can bunt your way on and move guys around, you've done your part. There goes the runner. That's foul back. Another hit and run there by Olivo. Just goes awry. And Keith came up through the ranks. Oh, yeah, he played the for the Cubs eights. and the Phillies. Cubs, Phillies, Baltimore. And you used all your tools. If you could bunt, you run a little bit. That was so very helpful to a team winning. Runner goes again. Ball four, lost it. So a nice at bat by Olivo. Didn't try to get swing crazy. That's the second walk issued by Savage. And that'll bring up Matt King, who drove in a run in the first. The only run of the game. He has runners at first and second and no one out here in the third inning. I'll tell you what, though, that was Olivo's entire goal was to advance Lytle on that. Didn't matter if he was going to get out himself. He tried a bunny, tried hitting runs. He finally gets there on a walk. <laughs> There's some gamesmanship on the part of Matt King there. Bluffed a bunt and see where he has the third baseman playing now. Dixon Williams 
right near the baseline in front of the cut at third. Wheel play is on. 1-0 pitch. Right back toward the mound. Over to first goes the throw, and down go runners to second and third. So King bunts two into scoring position here. That'll be 1-3 on the sacrifice, and Starling, the second baseman, almost got hit by the small freight train known as Matt King. It brings on Brock Palmer with runners at second and third. Wave that and miss, strike one. Uh, I'd say the most commonly used form bunt is to advance runners at first and second to get them both into scoring position. So King does that perfectly, and we'll see if uh, Palmer can execute. A one pitch up in the eyes, one ball and one strike. One of my favorite, favorite players of all time. You probably will not recognize this name, even though he played for the Philadelphia Phillies. Was a center fielder named Richie Ashburn. One one pitch. Left that up. Oh, Richie yeah. was a tremendous center fielder and tremendous bunt artist. And he had a little pop every now and again. But he was a big proponent of being able to use the bat in different ways. That's fouled off to the left. Count to two and two. Well, you're one of the few people that still reads books in this country, Cappy. So <laughs> <laughs> there's a great book on him. <laughs> Uh, called I, I Why the Hall Not. Yes. A and it was just, you know, because you run out of time to be elected into the Hall of Fame in baseball, so they were trying to make a big push for him. 2-2. Two -two. Slapped it foul into the screen. Count remains at 2-2. Two and two. Boy, Parmer, who walked his first time, really battling a savage here. Two balls and two strikes. UTSA with runners at second and third and only one out here in the bottom of the third. You savage pitch. Bouncing ball into right field, base hit. One run is in, they'll hold Oliva at third. And what a job by Brock Palmer finding that hole on the right side of the infield, driving in his 12th on the season and making this a two to nothing lead for UTSA. Exactly what you expected of these road runners. They come up swinging, doesn't matter if you're the best pitcher in the conference. They wanna make sure that they determine the pace of the game and you get their second run on the board, and they just have pulled out all the stops. Obviously, the sewing of the bunt, the bunt that advanced both runners into scoring position, uh, and obviously you go back to King's bunt. That's so big there to get Palmer's RBI. James Tausick stands in. Here's the first pitch to him, down and away, ball one. Will Coxon with a nice save there. Otherwise, Olivo probably could have trotted it home. Ooh, I don't know now. <laughs> that, that's fair. I don't know that's fair. now. One ball and no strikes. It wouldn't have been a trot. It would have been a gallop. <laughs> Here's the pitch. Bouncing ball in the right field. Base hit. Olivo scores. Rounding second, heading for third. And standing in safely goes Brock Palmer. It's now three to nothing as Tausick drives in his 18th on the season. It comes down to execution sometimes, Cappy, and this is execution to perfection by UTSA. You're going to have to pull out all the stops, as I mentioned a minute ago, and just great base running by Olivo. And now Brock Palmer sitting there at third. UTSA really trying to build up a good lead here for Orlowski to hammer away at that strike zone when he returns in the fourth. Still only one out. They're playing in a shift. Three to the left side of the infield. That ball just misses low, ball one, to Ty Odom, who struck out to finish off the first. Another safety squeeze attempt right there. Pat Hallmark being aggressive as he sent Palmer to maybe be halfway down the third baseline if Odom had laid it down. Tossing down at first, modest lead. Here's the 1-0 set. You savage deals, down and away. Two balls, no strikes. Now, Odom has a little pop, but that wind's really picked back up again. So, you try, probably just try and see if you can hit it high and far enough to get this sacrifice, but we'll see what the game plan is when he actually swings. How about hitting it low down the left field side? That's fouled off. And well, driving in, well, with the speed over at first base, Tausig runs well. Well, it's just that the left side of the infield seems to be overloaded. They're really playing Odom to push it over there to the left side. So, you're talking the right side right you want to send him. field gap, either way. It, you get it past that infield, down that left field side, close to the foul line, you got a track meet on your hands. Two balls and one strike. The Savage sets, deals. 
Bonnet out toward the mound. And the toss to first got it, but the run scores. It's four to nothing now. As Odom drives in his seventh with a sacrifice bunt. Execution on the safety squeeze. It finally comes to fruition. You see Towson advance to second in UTSA, building on their lead with this three run bottom of the third. And that'll bring up Diego Diaz, runners, uh, a runner at second base. As Towson ends up there. Let's see if Diego can keep it going here. Struck out his first time. That opened the third. The ball gets away, and down to third goes Towson. You got to think right now, and seeing the execution of that pitch, your Savage must be frustrated by now. This has to be his worst outing. I'll, I'll double check here uh, in a minute, but your Savage has certainly not had this kind of pressure put on him through the first three innings. Up in the cut at third comes Williams. The pitch by you, Savage. It's inside. Gets away briefly from Wilcox and the catcher. And takes it to 2-0. and oh. Yeah, how about this? Coming into today, he only gave up four runs on the season. Well, and... Yeah. Well. 2-0 pitch. Laid it over the outside edge. Dandy, strike one. Well, let me just t tell you this. This kid, you savage, can pitch, and he's going to be a big league pitcher. Otherwise, you wouldn't see 16 to 18 scouts out here. The other side of it, everybody has a bad day. That's a breaking ball that just misses inside, three and one. He's not hit. When he's throwing that breaking ball, if you look at the way he throws it, it's sort of casted like a, a fisherman, and he's just had no control of it. Did he go? Doesn't matter. Three balls and two strikes. Yeah, the only loss that you Savage has on the season was against, at the time, 15th-ranked North Carolina. They're currently 20th in the country, and he only gave up one run on four hits. 3-2. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Got him. Side retired. Top of the fourth inning between the Roadrunners and the Pirates. Robert Orlowski out for his fourth inning of work. He has three runs of support added on to his opportunities to go at the strike zone as he delivers a pitch high and away on the first offering to Wilcoxon. It's Wilcoxon, Carter, and McChrystal that are due up here as this one sent into left field and rotating over into foul ground. It'll be caught by Hill and out number one on the board in the top of the fourth. Four nothing roadrunner lead. On away in the top of the fourth, I'm Carl Schoening along with Mike Katz. We're happy you joined us. That's one of those little off the end of the bat pop ups that if you're a left fielder and you don't judge it properly when it's struck, you can get yourself into trouble. But boy, did Hill handle it well. Hill, one of the best defensive left fielders, also a pretty good slugger. At the plate here, Carter sees the first pitch for a strike across the knees. Bristol Carter, the freshman, sitting 341, one for one on the day, singled but left on at second in the second. 0-2. Chop to third, picked up by Rodriguez, throw across the diamond, and Olivo makes the squeeze for out number two. Orlowski certainly going at the strike zone here, up with four runs behind him. Brings up Ryan McChrystal, the DH, a junior. One for one today, hitting 355 in this plate appearance. Single, but was left on at first in the second. Him and Carter had the two singles that were with two outs back in the second inning. It's a grounder up the middle, picked up by King, and Olivo will make sure this is a one beyond the season. He'll go up against the 9-1-2 hitters for UTSA. Rodriguez leading things off, coming up swinging fouls off the first pitch he sees from you, Savage. Hill and Lytle also scheduled to appear at the plate. Trey Savage so far through three innings pitch has allowed six hits, four runs, all of them earned, walked a batter and struck out four. 0-1 misses high, and it's an even count, one ball, one strike. I'm Carl Schoening along with Mike Caps And Cappy, when you get off to a hot start like that, you realize he's human just like everybody else. Yes, sir. Breaking ball doesn't quite fall into the zone for ball two. But one of the things that, that 
really impresses me about him. He's fallen behind, but he still has maintained. Here's a grounder hit to short. Barini throws it to first, and Cunningham has to play that one in the dirt, but still in time for out number one. But still in all, he's behind four to nothing. And his teammates haven't generated much offense at all. But he's still pumping gas and doing what he needs to do. He's mixing and matching pitches and moving it around and, and just adding to his repertoire. He'll be fine long term, no doubt. Oh, he's still very well composed here as he sends some heat that Hill can't quite connect with for strike one. Caleb Hill so far on the day 0 for 2. His batting average has dropped to 407 in this plate appearance. Grounded out to first unassisted as he pops this one up into short left field. Carter will have to sprint to catch that one on a run for out number two. I don't think Carter really thought that ball was going to be pushed as far in toward the infield dirt as it was. And that wind really is playing a factor on anything hitting the air as we've seen a little bit of trouble of anybody trying to track it down here as Lytle comes up swinging and fouls off the first pitch he sees. Lytle's having quite the day. He's two for two. The junior now at 372 batting average. Singleton came around to score in the first, and he also singled and came around to score in the third. Two of the four roadrunner runs. He fouls this pitch off, and he's down 0-2 in the count. Bet you Trey is savage. Well aware when somebody's two for two against him. Currently ahead of the count here. No balls, two strikes. Two outs, nobody on the base pass. 0-2, slapped into right field where Jenkins Cowart will make the catch and the Roadrunners go down in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, no runners left. That fourth inning took about a mid-ups in. 0 for 1 today with a 183 batting average going up against Robert Orlowski way late on that swing as Orlowski sends in strike one. So far on the day, ECU is 4 of 15 from the plate with two strikeouts on the team. High and tight on the 0-1 and even counting the ball on a strike. The 1-1. Sending to center field and it'll take a hop in front of Mason Lytle for a single here to lead off the top of the fifth, Perini. Reaches base pass for the Pirates, and that'll bring up Dixon Williams. Williams bats left despite throwing right. The third baseman so far on the day is one for one. Comes to the plate hitting 233. Trying to advance Barini on the base pass. Orlowski working out of the stretch. Just off the plate. Ball one. Williams today, Singleton was left on a third in the third. The 1-0. Popped up foul. One ball, one strike now in Williams count. Rodriguez had an <laughs> incredible look on his face when he went to chase that. And, and it was almost as if he realized, wait a minute, the wind's blowing. I've done this three times before. <laughs> It's going to blow away from me, so I'm just going to shut her down, and that's exactly what he did. Save that energy. As he plays with a foot on the infield grass in a staggered stance, and it will go right past him for a single. Back-to-back -back singles for the Pirates. Barini and Williams, the eight and the nine hitters, set up. Riley Johnson, the leadoff batter and center fielder, left-handed batter, is one for two today with his best opportunity to drive in a run. Riley Johnson. Riley Johnson. Lefty on righty pitcher matchup. Following back-to-back -back singles, Pirates trying to get on the board here in the top of the fifth. Orlowski looks at the bunt sign. It's popped up foul. We've seen plenty of bunts here so far today. Not all of them laid down, but... Uh, you and I, fans of the bunt, so obviously uh, we're enjoying this game. If you have speed and you have guys who can do this and who practice the art of bunting, you can really put pressure on an infield defense, I'm telling you. 
Another bunt shown as this pitch misses high, and then Palmer tries to gun down at second base for Rini, but he'll scamper back safe there before a chance for King to make an att well, attack. The, well, the problem there was you have a left-handed hitter up, and, and, and Palmer's going right into his back trying to make a throw. It just is difficult. And a pickoff attempt. Barini safely there. Orlowski, if anything, resets the pitch clock. After a 1 2 3, top of the fourth. Different story here in the top of the fifth. Bunt pulled back again. Palmer thought about throwing down the second. Nobody there to cover, and that'll be ball two. Two balls and a strike now on Johnson's count. And with all the small ball we've seen, it only makes sense that Johnson would try and advance Williams in Barini. 2-1 catches the low outside corner for strike two, and I would imagine Johnson's bunt sign is off. I, I think you're right, but what a pitch. What execution, and spotted it exactly where he wanted it to go. Because that bunt wasn't pulled back by Johnson. It still hits the strike zone. That's... Pretty impressive control there by Orlowski. Wheel play is on as they try to prepare for this bunt with two strikes. Comes up swinging as he fakes out everybody on the infield and sends it into foul territory on the right field side. That's one of those if, if, if you're a third baseman and a first baseman crashing and he plays butcher boy with you, which is what they call that play, pulls the bat back and takes a whack at it, you hope he hits it high and foul, not at your noggin. 2-2, a grounder up the middle, double play opportunity as King picks it up at short and fires at the first. Olivo completes the 6-3 put out as unassisted on the tag at second. King gets the first out. Olivo makes the squeeze for out number two. That does advance Marini to third. And now with two outs on the board, the most dangerous batter entering today's game, Carter Cunningham comes to the plate. Cunningham, the first baseman, is 0 for 2. Batting average is dropped to 443. That's not much of a drop. No, it's not. He's an everyday player for the Pirates. Team leader in batting average as he has a golf swing at the first pitch from Orlowski, who, you know, he's hanging his hat on the fact that he's gotten him out the first two times he's faced him. That was one whale of, whale of a pitch, too. It, it, it just disappeared. The 0-1 misses low and away. Nicely stopped by Palmer. Cunningham granted out to the pitcher back in the first, and then he reached on fielder's choice in the third, but was not able to advance past first base. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on, sending in the gap in right center field, and it'll be a diving catch made by Mason Lytle. That'll end the top of the fifth. Oh, 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 my. My, what a catch. That is definitely SC top 10 quality as it saves a run for UTSA. No runs off two hits, no errors made defensively. In fact, a spectacular play made in center field by Mason Lytle. And a runner left on for ECU. We head into the bottom of the fifth. It's still 4-0. The Roadrunners looking to add on to their lead when we come back. Going about six innings as he fires in a fastball that's just off the plate. Ball one to Olivo. Alexander Olivo is one for one today. He walked and was left on at third in the first, and he reached on a sink, uh, walk in the third and came around to score. He comes up swinging here and sends one in the left field for a single to lead off the bottom of the fifth. That's his second one on the night, and that's the seventh hit given up by you Savage. And you got to remember, he had given up 12 hits and had in 30 innings, his first 30 innings, and now he's given up seven. So it just goes to show you people make up their minds to do something against the best pitchers around. They can make it happen. King takes a pitch inside on the first offering from you, Savage. Olivo on at first. Matt King one for one today. He brought in a run with a single but was left on at second in the first. And he had a sacrifice bunt that advanced runners in the third, part of a three-run bottom of the third. For UTSA as inside once again, King takes ball two. Strong wind coming in from right field to the baseline. 
Here's the 2-0. Third straight pitch inside as he Savage has not given Matt King anything to swing at. About the second hitter who came up in this game for UTSA. That was Lytle. They were finding out that you Savage as a strike is finally delivered there by you Savage on a 3-0 count was not a Superman and we've seen it come to fruition. Now, you know, they may mount some big comeback here, but I, I'm liking what I'm seeing from the Roadrunners. 3-1 is sent in the left field and back-to-back -back singles for UTSA here in the bottom of the fifth. Olivo advances the second. Matt King gets aboard with his second single of the day. And that'll set up runners at first and second for the left-handed batting junior, Brock Palmer. Palmer, 316 batting average coming to the plate, one for one today. He was hit by a pitch in the first, left on at first, and he singled to bring in a run and then came around to score himself in that three-run bottom of the third. And here is the second mound visit, which is basically going to Savage, the righty. Bunch shown by Palmer, pulled back as the pitch misses away. You make one an inning. And the second one, you must pull him out. Per inning thing. Now, yeah. It's not per there you game. Go. There you go. That makes sense. The 1-0 -oh bunt misfired as that'll be called a strike. Now, you would know better than me. In professional baseball, they've limited the mound visits for the entire game, yes. correct? Yes. Thank God. What? <laughs> uh, 1-1 one, one to Parmer, shows bunt, pulls away again as the pitch misses away. Being old school, um, I could sit and watch major league managers come out, get in arguments with umpires and a big brouhaha, and I love the heck out of it. But if you're trying to speed up a game. 2-1 fouled back. Then you got to do that, and, and uh, they've done that. I just... Baseball's done a great job of listening to the non-purist fans on speeding things up, making the game more athletic. But you have to wonder how far is too far. When are you going to stop at these concessions here as Palmer's 2-2 is swung on and fouled off? Doing a great job here. Doing a very, very, very nice job. Is, is the batter here, Palmer. And let's see how this ends up. Savage trying to get a tough out as Palmer fouls off yet another pitch. I think, just back to your point a second ago, I think they've taken this about as far as they can take it. 2-2 um. to Palmer. This one grounded down the first baseline, and Cunningham will look for the lead runner. It's bobbled at second base, but still squeezed by Barini, and... The lead runner, King, is out on his way to second. Olivo advances to third. Pitching on the fielder's choice at first is Brock Palmer. Runners on the corners, one out coming up to the plate, James Tausick. And I just think that this has all come about over the last five years or so, six years. Let it settle in. Yeah, let it settle in. We just last year gave up the shifts in professional baseball. I like that one, too. As the pitch is a little high for James Tausick. Tausick, one for two. Now, you like the shifts, or you are glad they're I, gone? I like that they're gone. I do, be too. Because, do too. you know, it, the obviously, it just I'm more a fan of scoring than I am of fast games. The 1-0. Hit high in the air. This one should leave the ballpark. Unplayable foul ball coming back. Tomorrow's starter to me for um, East Carolina is intriguing. Zach Root. Now, as Coach Godwin told us in our Zoom visit, here's another guy. Palmer swings at a high pitch and fouls it off once more. Or, excuse me, Talsic fouls that swing off. Who throws it in the mid-90s. Um has a big curveball, slider cutter at 86 to 88. And Root, like, like you Savage, has just been absolutely tremendous. One-two to Towson. 
swings through and misses. And then trying to take off for second, caught in a run down there. Brock Palmer, who reached on the fielder's choice, will be part of a unconventional double play. That'll end the bottom of the fifth inning. No runs off two hits, no errors made defensively by the Pine to cut into a 4-0 lead. They had their best chance to score with two singles to lead off the fifth inning, and then they head into a double play, and Mason Lytle made sure that no run would score with a phenomenal catch in center field. Coming up swinging here and reaching on kind of an awkward ground ball is Chickens Cowart, and he'll go ahead and be the leadoff single here in the top of the sixth. Yeah, and Mason Lytle's going to be getting on ESPN for that play. <laughs> He's on ESPN Sports Center. Let's go Sports Center. Yeah. I don't want to finish my doubt about tomorrow's starter in just a second, too. For sure. Jenkins Coward on first means that Starling comes to the plate here. Starling sees the first pitch outside. Ball one. Zach Root. One of two starting pitchers for ECU that was made a top 150 starter mm -hmm. by D1 Baseball as this one's fouled off and it's 1-1. And I expect to see the same scouts who are here this evening out here tomorrow. Root 3-0 and with 1-2-1 ERA and five starts. About 30 innings, 17 hits surrendered. 1-1 one, one ground. Will be picked up by Olivo covering at first. Orlowski will get Starling out on his way to first. That allows the base runner Jenkins Coward to get to scoring position at second. One away here in the top of the sixth. And like you Savage has a six to one strikeouts to walk ratio. And where you Savage open play tonight with a 118 batting average against. Root has a 172 batting average against, which is still magnificent. Orlowski delivers a strike to Starling here, who's for two on the day. Big over the top. Love that pitch. Starling batting 267 at this plate appearance. Struck out looking in the second, flew out to center in the third. This one fouled off. Should say Will Coxon, excuse me as Justin Wilcoxon, the catcher, fifth hitter in the order. 0-2 in the Senior 0 for 2. Grounded out to second in the second. And flew out to left in the fourth. Grounder here hit to Diaz, and Diaz makes the easy throw over to Olivo. Two away, but Jenkins Coward just inching 90 feet towards 90 feet away. Now watch this. This is the left fielder, Bristol Carter, who laid down a perfect bunt with two out in that second inning. First pitch he sees low and away, and he tells Jenkins Coward to stay at third as Parmer does a great job catching that in the left-handed batter box. Well, we already saw a safety squeeze today from the Roadrunners, executed well. This one lined up the middle and it'll be an RBI that brings in Jenkins Coward and Bristol Carter gets the Pirates on the board with their first run of the ball game coming here in the top of the sixth inning. Well, this right here and now is where you have to shut them down. You got to get out of this inning. Don't give up anything and continue to battle on. So Carter. Will bring in his eighth run of the season. A throw over to first, and Carter's safe standing up. McChrystal, the DH, steps in. Still waiting for his first pitch from Orlowski. McChrystal singles left on a first in the second, grounded out to short in the fourth, and time is asked for here as our I believe coach Godwin is saying something's happening at the dugout Pat Hallmark's not quite sure what it is and this will lead to a conversation where Pat Hallmark I guess wants to 
give his two cents on what was being said. We can only speculate. Well, I didn't see the initial dust up. Godwin had made some kind of complaint, had he, about what was going it, on in the dugout? It seems like he pointed over there, and, well, we resume. Probably something we'll never know, and if we ever find out, we won't be sharing with the audience. Well, depends on what it is. Please don't take any offense, audience. As McChrystal will line this one down the right field line, that'll advance Carter around second to third as it goes to the corner where Odom picks it up, and he'll deliver it to the cutoff, Diaz. So runners on the corners now as Carter reaches third on the McChrystal single, and Jacob Barini comes up to the plate. Joey Barini comes up to the plate. Barini, the switch hitter, one for two on the day. The senior singled back in the fifth, but was left on at third. And Orlowski will have a quick conversation with Brock Palmer. They're one out away from getting out of this top of the sixth inning with only trying to get out of the inning with only one run given up. Fires a strike across the knees. I like how you beat the umpire some, most of the time, Kathy. You, I'm, I'm, I wait on the umpire sometimes. You already give the point. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> the 0-1. Golf swing sent to second. It'll be scooped up by Diaz. Easy throw to Olivo to end the inning. One run does score off three hits. No errors made defensively by the road runners. And has no record, a 9 ERA, four appearances, one start. Batters hit him at 263. Ty Odom comes to the plate, bottom of the order due up for the Roadrunners. Odom, Diaz, and Rodriguez. And one ball, one strike on the count now here to Odom as he took a strike, and then he takes that pitch off of the dirt. Nobody on, so no harm done. Will Coxon catching the balls and strikes from Norby. Cunningham at first, Starling at second, Barini at short, and Williams at third. In the outfield left to right here as the 1-1 one -one hit high on the left field side. will be scooped up by... The shortstop Barini and the throw over to Cunningham in time for out number one here in the bottom of the sixth. The outfield for the Pirates, Carter in left, Johnson in center, and Jenkins Cowher in right. So with Ty Odom retired, that'll bring up Diego Diaz. Left-handed batting freshman's 0 for 2 today with a 259 batting average going up against Ethan Norby. And the first pitch to him catches the low outside corner first strike. Cappy, if anybody that I know knows as well as anybody, if that made sense, baseball is a sport where they scout the prospects, and the 0-1 oh, misses inside. One ball, one strike here with one out and nobody on. The number eighth ranked American athletic prospect for the 2026 Major League Baseball draft is this man right here on the mound, and Ethan Norby. Yes, he is, and he has a brother that's in the Baltimore Orioles organization. And you better believe that there is some kind of rivalry going on between those two brothers. One who's knocking on the professional door in a couple of years and a brother who's already playing pro ball. And I'll guarantee you winter times around their house uh, is testy sometimes. 1-1 <laughs> one, one downstairs. Two balls, no strikes here as Diaz resumes his plate appearance all in good fun but oh yeah bunch shown pulled back as the pitch misses away norby now falls into the hitters count he was also ranked by d1 baseball as the 10th ranked american impact freshman and a called strike there as diaz got a little too eager about to toss away his bat and now the count is full ruga rio Haas continues to loosen the bullpen for UTSA. Now there's an obvious ball four called there, and Diaz will reach on a one-out walk. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Riojas start the top of the seventh. Oh, I think he will. And Hector Rodriguez comes to the plate. One out, one on. Roadrunners with a three-run lead. Big thanks to scoring one run in the bottom of the first and three runs in the bottom of the third. Norby the lefty. Excuse me, swing is fouled off. Rodriguez really had to reach to get a piece of that one. That was a hidden run that was on Diaz. We'll have to return to first. 
and a tie of the shoe by Starling before we can resume. So I didn't realize you were a fan. I knew you were a Phillies fan, but I didn't know it went back as far as Richie Ashburn. <laughs> the 0-1 here. Taken for a strike by Rodriguez. I mean, that's that's pretty amazing. Uh, yeah, you, you know, don't don't test me too much on Philly's history, but no, Rich, no. Richie Ashburn had a really big campaign in the city of Philadelphia to try and make the Hall of Fame before his time expired. Right. So that's really how I knew the name. 0-2 pitch in well, the turf. I'll tell you, the, Richie Ashburn was a longtime radio broadcaster for the Phillies and just tremendous. And the fact he played center field, and I did, and uh, I just loved to watch him. I was a little bitty kid when he played. One, two, fisted in the right field by Rodriguez. Diaz rounding second will be play at third and slides in safe. What a catch there by Williams. As he had to show off his vertical to make sure that one didn't get past him and allow Diaz to score. But Rodriguez puts runners on the corners to the top of the order, Caleb Hill. Well, and give credit now to Diaz. He took off. He was headed to third base. I don't care how good the throw was. The throw was up a little bit from Jenkins Coward, but still the throw was strong in from right field. Yeah, like you said, a little high, but otherwise that was a great throw. That might have gotten him out if it weren't for that jump. Now Caleb Hill 0 for 3, 402 batting average. As he sees the first pitch low and away, ball one. Like I said, Hill 0 for 3, grounded out to first, unassisted in the first, struck out, swinging in the second, and flew out to left in the fourth. Big spot here. All he needs is a sack fly to add on to the Roadrunners 4-1 lead. He gets an opportunity but fouls it off. I'll tell you a quick Reggie Ashburn story. Uh, during his broadcast career, some fan in some contest gave him uh, a yacht, oh, wow. a small yacht, and he and he rode in it up and down the river there at Philadelphia. One one fouled off, and inadvertently hit a stump or a rock or something, and the thing sank, and he had to swim out. And uh, somebody asked him about it, <laughs> and he said, "Well, nothing ventured, nothing gained." <laughs> <laughs> One, two above the strike zone there on Caleb Hill. Two balls, two strikes on his count. Not necessarily sure the general public should be owning boats and planes without, you know, proper education on where you can drive and fly those things as Caleb Hill will strike out for the second time this evening after swinging through on an Aston breaking ball by Norby. Well, <laughs> That leads me off into 15 <laughs> yeah, directions. Yeah. Well, but yeah. but yeah, I, I think that's 100% correct. We're, we're getting to the point where I don't know how easy it will be for the individual to own drones because drones are just becoming so much yes. of a distraction yes. and all that kind of stuff. Mason Lytle comes to the plate, comes up swinging, chops one up the middle, and Starling will tag second unassisted on the fielder's choice to end the inning. So no runs off of a hit, no air. But I tell you, he's grown up in a lot of ways. He's 6'1", he weighs 185, can throw it 93, 94. Was 5-0 and as mostly a reliever, made one start with a 4'11 ERA. Well, let's see how he does against the Pirates. 4-1, to one, UTSA here in the seventh. That's upstairs just a bit, ball one. Dixon Williams, Riley Johnson, Carter Cunningham, 9-1-2. One, one foot in front of the cut at third. That's over for a strike for Rodriguez. Two for two for Dixon Williams, the third baseman. Lights beginning to gently take effect here at Roadrunner Field. Here's the pitch, a breaking ball misses way upstairs, two and one. That was an adrenaline charged. Cutter, it appeared. Well, Orlowski set up for the win through six inning pitch, allowed nine hits, but only one run, and it was earned. Only two, one, one, one. Fouled it back, evens it up at two and two. Orlowski's spectacular. Great, great job for the freshman. 
four nine zero UTSA one nine zero East Carolina. The two two set. The pitch. Hit high in the air to left, racing over, over, and a nice running grab onto the warning track from Caleb Hill to the left fielder. That's the first out here in the seventh inning. Williams really gave it a ride, but Caleb Hill was on his horse. About as scary of a hit ball as you're going to see that ends up in the glove of a road runner is if Hill doesn't catch up to that, it's probably easily a double. No question about that. Back to the top. Roddy Johnson has a single in three times. Left-handed stick, and that one's over for a strike. Ruger Riojas just as calm as you please. Ruger was about 170, 175. He looks like he may be 180, 185 now. Put on some muscle, swinging through that one and missing. Strike two. And Riojas has been pitcher of record four times this season, all wins. Right, right, right. I know you probably mentioned that, obviously, when introducing him, but, but wasn't still impressive. As, it, it, swing and a miss. Chase one way above the letter. Strike three. So the first punch out for Riojas. <laughs> uh, it, mine didn't have as much flourish as yours did. Oh, good. Yeah, Johnson, you know, goes after that high fastball and, you know, Riojas off to a good start here. He's obviously not set up to be pitcher of record, and he hopes that he can just kind of maintain this lead for UTSA here in the last few innings. Wouldn't be surprised to see him finish the game as, you know, UTSA is trying to find out who their closer is going to be after losing Simon Miller last year. Four to one, Roadrunners, this set. Pitch to Cunningham. That's fouled off. Off to the left and out of play, strike one. Cunningham is grounded out on a comebacker to the pitcher, aboard on a fielder's choice, and lined to center field, a spectacular catch by Lytle. That's popped into left field. Racing in, in, in comes Caleb Hill, squeezes it. One, two, three, a perfect seventh inning thrown by Ruger Riojas. Dorby comes out for his second inning of work and a big rip and a miss off the bat of Alexander Olivo, who's two for two with a walk and a run scored. Here's the next pitch. That's a little bit low. Evens it up at one and one. Olivo with base hits in 10 of his last 13. Boy, pretty good looking pitch. Off speed, two balls and one strike. Norby needs to be told he has 20 seconds to throw. <laughs> two one pitch. That one's downstairs. Three balls, one strike now. Glad you, I, I, I've been <laughs> meaning to mention this two or three different times when I've seen this happen. Even with a pitch clock, that's on the inside edge, full count now. Some pitchers, and you see it, you see it more. Here's the payoff. Down and away, ball four, lost him. So a nice patient at bat for Alexander Olivo results in... The second walk given up by Ethan Norby. By younger pitchers who, by their own admission, are going to work quicker. We get, right. A pinch runner, did you get who it was? Drake Smith. Okay, cool. So Drake Smith will run for Olivo, so we'll have to see what substitution might happen at first base defensively. But, yeah, he threw he threw six pitches right there. None of them were under 15 seconds on the pitch clock. Most of them were around 17 seconds. But here's the thing. There's some psychology behind that coming from a pitcher and a pitching coach. As that pitch misses down to Matt King, who has a couple of knocks in two official times, is driven in a run. That one's high and outside for a strike. <laughs> but, but it's, in other words, a lot of times you'll see pitchers work, especially in the higher minors or maybe big leagues. Now Smith's coming back over. What's going on here? Pat Hallmark wanted to chat with him, and I guess Smith as well, because obviously, you know, no outs. Do you, do you keep playing small ball and maybe bunt to get a runner in scoring position? And, and you know, Norby, like I said, has just been working really fast. And you have to wonder, 
if that maybe plays into this conversation well, here, just throw him off his rhythm. Let me throw something else at you right here. Maybe this is what this is to slow him down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool him out a little bit. All sorts of games within this game going on. Oh, it's a chess on every, match. Every pitch. Shift is on to the left. Here's the pitch. That misses downstairs, two and one. Huge hole on the right side of the infield. And Ethan Norby throws one outside. It's a perfect chance for King to rip it to right. Let's see how this goes, the pitch. Runner goes. That's fouled off. Two balls and two strikes. A four to one lead for UTSA as we play here in the bottom half of the seventh at Roadrunner Field at a very, very beautiful night here in South Texas. Norby's next pitch. Wow. That's a pitcher's pitch, just missed. Three balls and two strikes. Norby's got to be wondering what he has to do to get a strike call. I feel like there's been a couple calls that probably should have been called strikes in his favor. Set. Payoff. That's foul back. That hit and run we were talking about. Smith will have to catch his breath on his way back to first. Well, Smith came blowing. That's 27. I thought we. Or, that's 27. That's Stuckey, is it not? I thought I saw 22 trot out there. 3 2 pitch. Runner goes. Pit, throw high. Got it. And that is Drake Smith, who will be retired in an unconventional strike him out, throw him out, double play. There you go. Two outs. That's the second strikeout for Norby. And that's a strike thrown to Brock Parmer, who has an RBI single in two official times. Has walked and scored one of the four. That one dances off the outside, one and one. I like the classy UTSA uniforms, but those numbers are a little bit cursive. One, one. Pushed the bat at it. Foul tipped it. One ball and two strikes. I was reminded last night that I can't read cursive when UTSA won their first women's basketball postseason game. One, two pitch, cut on and miss, strike three. So uh, Ethan Norby started out this inning with a walk and pitched right around it. No runs, no hits, nuts. Jacob Jenkins Coward stands in, left handed batter with a deep crouch and hits a rocket shot on two hops, knocked down and underneath the glove of the second baseman. That ball just absolutely overpowered Diaz. You, you called it. It was a rocket shot. Diaz with great positioning, but it knocked that glove almost off his hand, and it still, after hitting you know, the glove there, ended up in right field, a solid 15 feet behind him. A lot of top spin on that. That'll bring up Jacob Starling, who's hit less than three times. Double play depth middle infield, even with a bag at third. Rodriguez, that pitch in the dirt. Nice, nice block with a chest protector by Brock Parmer. Saved the day and kept the runner at first. Yeah, Parmer actually lost the ball, but he kept it so close to him that Jenkins Cowart wasn't going to test him, and he's had a couple good throws down the line to second. Look at Jenkins Cowart's lead out of first. Here's the pitch. Ah, it's upstairs. Yeah. Right now, Rio, uh, Riojas has to regain a little composure. That The way that ball was stung, and it was stung, I think has shaken Riojas a little bit here. The set at 2-0, the pitch on the way. Upstairs, three balls, no strikes. Yeah, there's no sport quite like baseball where you need to move on to the next play. Sometimes that last play will affect you, and Riojas needs to find the strikes under this pitch. Set at 3-0. Upstairs. Ball four. This is this is where you do not want to lose control here. And Coach Cliff Godwin calling his batter. Wilcoxon over for a chat. 
look for him to perhaps bunt those two in the scoring position. We'll see. That's probably the game plan here because, you know, you're playing with house money with runners at first and second and nobody out. You need – you have six outs to score three runs to force extra innings. So I, I get the feeling you play a little small ball here and you set yourself up for a better chance to score those. Runs. A look back at second, Rio Haas deals. Over the inside edge, strike one, just below the letters. Wilcox and grounded to short for the second out in the second inning. Fly to left to open the fourth and grounded to second base for the second out, the sixth. And just misses upstairs. One ball and one strike. Well, you know, I, I've said it both ways here now. Uh, these pitchers have to wonder exactly what qualifies as a strike, and they're over the heart of the plate to get those calls sometimes. Look back at second to pitch. Rip and a miss. One and two. The set at one to the pitch. Swung on and foul back. Will Coxon from Raleigh, North Carolina. Preseason all. American Athletic Conference. 318 last year, drove in 49. One ball and two strikes. That's inside. Nice backhanded save by Brock Parmer. And Will Coxon. Come back and hit. Yep. Yep. That was a correct call. Two balls and two strikes. The batter, Justin Wilcoxon. Nobody out here in the eighth inning. A four to one lead for UTSA. Look back at second base pitch. Left that up just a bit. Pretty good looking pitch. Three balls and two strikes. I don't think I've ever seen anybody coach as hard as Coach Godwin is. That third base batter box is coach's box is kind of a you know guideline let's put it that way he's out on the field the pitch ripping a miss swung in one way upstairs that's the second punch out for Ruger Riojas first out of this eighth inning brings on Bristol Carter who has two hits and an RBI righty righty matchup biggest strikeout of the evening there that was huge So far, you're right. The pitch. Left that up. One and nothing. Ball comes out of Ruger's hand so easily and has such nice movement on his fastball. All his pitches move all over the place. One and nothing. That one there for a strike. Little cut and downward run to that. Nice and relaxed right handed batter, the 1 1. Upstairs. Ruger's throwing this pitch up. He did this to Wilcoxon, and Wilcoxon thought it hit him. That was the same pitch just repeated to a right-handed batter. Here, here's the pitch. Popped it up behind home plate. Riojas ran all the way onto the warning track along with. <laughs> Every, Eddie, everybody went after that one because, hey, that's, this, is, this is crunch. Everybody's going to try and make a play if they can. And oh, sure. It didn't look like it was going to leave the ballpark until uh, it hit its apex and started to fall. Two balls and two strikes. Double play depth. UTSA infield the pitch. On the outside edge, strike three call. Rung him up. 
Carter not making any friends there as no. he has some words for the home plate umpire on his way out. Probably his last plate appearance of the day anyway if UTSA can hold on the win. But back-to-back -back huge strikeouts by Ruger Riojas, and he catches that low outside corner perfectly. Ryan McChrystal, catcher by Trey, two for three. Left-handed swinging deep with two gone. Four to one, UTSA. Here's a look back at second base. The pitch. Popped it into center field. This is trouble. Racing for the plate and scoring. Comes Jenkins Coward. Now it's tightened up. Four to two now. The wind giveth and the wind taketh away. Time it took it away from the road runners. Mason Lytle had a track on it, but he couldn't quite catch up to it. It sort of died in midair and fell solid 10 feet in front of him. Trying to get a look at the number on this hitter. Umpire's working on his scorecard, so I think they have a pinch hitter here. Or is this still uh, I, Barini? I believe Barini's out of the game. It is eight. I don't know why. Two aboard, two out. A two-run advantage now for UTSA here in the eighth. Rio Huss checks second twice. A longer look the second time in the pitch. Upstairs, ball one. Ruger continues to miss high in the zone. Nobody's warming up in the UTSA bullpen, so he's going to have to work it out himself. Barini, one for three. Fouls that one back, evens it up at one and one. And it's Luke Nowak who's running at first there for McChrystal. So it's a pinch runner. That was the clerical error. Okay. That, or the clerical work that we saw the home plate umpire do. Next pitch on the inside edge. Pretty elegant pitch. Must have missed inside, two and one. Two one set the pitch. Bouncer hit the first. Henning steps right on the bag side. Retired. One actually no, it looks not. like Aiden Bauman will be leading things off for the Roadrunners. Aiden Bauman. Three oh eight batter in eight games. Five starts. Want that right-handed bat who looks at a strike. Yet a needed a nine iron. <laughs> Talsic was one for three, and like you said, get that righty bat in. And two strikes. These pitches look really low. But we're up here. He's down there. 0-2 pitch. Bouncer hit down toward first. Backhanded. Racing to the bag, and Norby gets there ahead. Of the base runner Bauman. That's one out here in the eighth. Ty Odom has a sacrifice RBI fly ball in two official times. Let's see if Ty can get something untracked here and get another run or two on the board. Left hander winds and fires. Bunted up the first base side. This is a dandy. And they'll tag the runner out. Two gone. That'll bring on Diego Diaz, who has a walk. He's 0 for 2 otherwise, striking out the other two times. A little too fast off the bat there as Cunningham was able to play it right down the baseline, but you're right, it stayed fair pretty well. Didn't really fool anybody. Here's the pitch in a lefty-lefty matchup. That one just misses wide of the plate, ball one. Diaz, couple of homers, 11 driven in. Wind continues to howl in. That's a knee-high pitch. Ball two. Wind really has been with us all night long. 2-0 pitch there for a strike. Just a huge gap between the second base bag and third baseman Williams here. Swing and a miss. Two balls, two strikes. Now the full shift is on with two strikes.
Time called. This is where you, in, in a perfect world, here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. Up and down in order go the road runners here in the eighth. No runs, no hits, none left. Johas first pitch. Fouled off to the left. Over the lights and out of play, strike one. Ruger Riojas with a big spot here to get Orlowski his win that he was set up for when he left the game. And UTSA all too happy that they can only throw two pitchers in this one. That's hit right back up the middle. Nice play moving to his left king. Throws a strike to first and got it. So one out now and back to the top. As Riley Johnson has a single, a third inning single in four times up. Not so routine play by King as, like you said, just great range there to get the throw over to first. Set again. The pitch up in the eyes, ball one. I don't think anybody's going to be caught off guard by bunts the rest of the weekend. <laughs> they were really ready for that Johnson uh, bunt there as Rodriguez was ready to crash from third. One and nothing, the pitch. That one sails to the inside edge and evens it up at one and one. You know, I love me some Ruger Riojas. I mean, this kid just just keeps charging forward. Here's the one one. That one laid over the middle. Where was that one? Two balls, one strike. <laughs> I like that you have to ask where that one was because the uh, Roadrunner fans seem to have a consensus opinion. They are not letting Doug Williams leave this ballpark peacefully tonight. The 2-1. Three balls, one strike. Now you do not want to let these guys up off the deck because you Johnson aboard now and you bring the tying run to the plate. And by the way, Carter Cunningham has power. The 3-1 set. The pitch. Over the inside edge for a strike. I would assume that means Johnson's bunt sign is off now, and Riojas, he had some big strikeouts last inning. We'll see if he can get another one here. Payoff. Rip and a miss. Letter high heat, strike three. So the fourth punch out for Ruger Riojas. Johnson strikes swinging, and it comes down to Carter Cunningham. Hitless in four times. Outfield shades him slightly toward left. Riojas heaves a sigh and deals. Way upstairs, ball one. One ball, no strikes. The pitch hammered into center field on the run. Can he run it down? Yes, he does. Mason Lytle runs it down, and UTSA wins game one by a 4-2 final. Four